Hey friends of Keyclock, nice to see you again. Having configured multiple identity providers in Keyclock is a great thing. But perhaps you want that Keyclock automatically chooses the right identity provider when the users just enter their email addresses or their usernames. Well, I talked to Sven Torben Janus, who developed the Keyclock extension, and um, yeah, we'll see what, pos what is possible and what we can do and all this. Make yourself comfortable and let's start. Today in my video, I'm welcoming Sven Torben Janus from Conciso. Hi, Sven Torben. Hi, Nico. Sven Torben, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your um, your journey to Keycloak with Keycloak and so on. Sure. Thanks, Nico, first of all, uh, for having me. Um, yeah, my name is Sven Torben Janus. I'm working uh, with Conciso and I'm a partner at Conciso and um, yeah, like principal consultant. Um, I've quite a long journey already with Keycloak, um, like several years actually, um, started with um, yeah, implementing some um, authenticators for several customers and also doing consulting. Um, yeah, for all, all kinds of, we're also offering um, hosting for Keycloak instances, uh, doing second level support for customers and um, sort of quite a broad range of several topics. Um, yeah, besides that, I'm also um, implementing open source Keycloak extensions, basically two. And today I would like to introduce my home IDP discovery extension. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's quite an inter uh, interesting uh, extension. So um, many of you out there have uh, the requirement to maintain um, several IDPs and uh, you don't want to have these auto-generated buttons at the login page so that the, the uh, users have to click on one of these buttons or see these other buttons from other customers, from other clients. And um, many of you um, have the requirement to, yeah, to just to enter the, the username or the email address and then being redirected to uh, um, the proper um, um, external identity provider. And uh, Sven Torben, you implemented some very interesting extension for Keycloak. I also recommended this already to some of my customers and they are um, using it um, pretty successfully. And yeah, I would say uh, the stage is yours. Um, tell us about your extension. Okay, then let's uh, do a short deep dive, I guess. Um, so as Nico already said basically when you have multiple identity providers and um, you want to use them for federated login scenarios you end up with a bunch of these buttons down here like i have google here and some example identity providers but this may be like i don't know even more 10 50 depending on your current scenarios and um, it's kind of awkward i think for users to um, just have to choose one of these, know exactly where to click and these things and um, even in larger enterprise scenarios and B2B scenarios, for example, this may be a long list. So and then explaining a customer, you have to click on button with IDP, whatever. Um, it's quite cumbersome. So basically, it works like this. You click on a button like here, for example, if I choose Google, I get redirected to Google. Hope so. And then I can choose my account, for example, and um, yeah, then have to log in there and then get redirected back. But um, so with my extension, it's just not needed anymore. So let me just do a quick introduction to the extension. So um, basically, um, if you have a default browser login flow, you end up with the cookie flow and whatever you've configured, and you end up with the username password form, which is also basically rendering these buttons at the bottom of the page. You can choose the identity provider from. So with my extension, you would actually get a new authenticator. So I've pre-configured this here, for example, for the home IDP discovery flow down here. And um, it basically works like this in general. You have a cookie authenticator for the single sign-on case. Obviously, you can add my home IDP discovery extension and um, you have a password form as a kind of fallback if you don't find a matching identity provider. So um, let me just bind this flow to the browser flow here so and i can immediately see that this will change now so in general we have the username and password form here if i now 
refresh the page, you um, only have a username or email form. You still have these buttons down here, but um, well, that's basically Keycock default, um, how to say, uh, functionality, where uh, you can just hide these, for example. So if I take the Google one here, um, I can now hide it on the login page. Uh, let me see, where is it? Uh, there, here, sorry. So if I save this um, and we go back, you basically see it's gone here. So it's still active and we can use it. And now let me show how this works. If I just enter a domain here, for example, gmail.com, and with some email address, I can now click sign in and I get redirected to Google immediately. So um, under the hood, there's a piece of configuration which um, matches the domain name of the email address, in this case it was gmail.com, to the identity provider. And this is just a small like config property you can add to the identity provider. It's called home IDP discovery domains, and then you can have a list of domains um, here, in this case is example.com, example.net for example, in the case you've just, I just demonstrated, it would just be gmail.com. So with this, you can now um, yeah, have different domains matched to different identity providers. For example, if I put something here like test at example, um, what was it, .com, for example, I can say sign in. I get redirected to another. Oh, no, I just fall through. I didn't, didn't match. Um, so you get the actual password form. Um, let check something else, test it, example, dot, net, for example. I get redirected to another identity provider. In this case, it's already Keycloak. So what you also see is that we're also supporting this login hint parameter. You could find this in the URL as well, but we are passing the username to the um, identity provider we want to use so that you don't have to insert your email address or username a second time, for example. But that basically comes with Keycloak out of the box because the extension uses all these Keycloak features um, under the hood that are already implemented. Um, so besides that, we have several options to configure this authenticator. Uh, maybe I just demonstrate a few of them, not all. Um, so let me get back to the authentication flow down here. It's here. And we have some configuration options here, as you may know from the settings. Um, so currently, for example, this one is configured to use a user attribute, UPN called. So this is a user principal name, for example. Sometimes if you don't want to use email addresses, for example, in Active Directory integration scenarios, you may also have a, um, a principal name. Let me just check this for the user, for example. They look very similar to email addresses, so that's why this works. For example, if I take this user here, I have an attribute which is called UPN, and we have something that looks like an email address, but maybe you use a principal name in this case. Um, okay, so you can use different attributes besides the email address. Um, that's one thing, and so let me just change this, for example, for the email address. If you write email here, for example, it will also valid, uh, only redirect if the email address is already validated. Um, that's not the case for other attributes, obviously, because Keycloak doesn't have that feature for each attribute. But if the email address isn't validated, you wouldn't get um, forwarded to the identity provider. Um, so we have a few more other features. For example, um, you may have scenarios where you uh, for example, companies may have multiple identity providers and you cannot always uh, match it 100% on the email address. So you could switch this off, for example, and say um, we want the users to choose, but basically reduce the list of options. So if I switch this on, for example, uh, off, sorry, um, and if we go back to the login page. So for example, you have these two identity providers down here. We also would have... Um, Oh, let me show it this way. It's maybe easier if I just switch this on again. Let us show the Google one as well. Okay, we now have these three identity providers here, Google and the IDP1 and IDP2. And IDP1 and IDP2 um, both support the example.com domain. Google obviously doesn't. So if I just say test the example.com here, 
I can click sign in and then I get a list only with the IDPs that match that domain. So I can choose from this list and I don't have a list of potentially, I don't know, 10, 50 or even more identity providers to choose from, which makes it much more easy for the user to decide which one to use. Um, if you give this a more speaking name, uh, it would even be more easier. Um, beside that, um, we can also have uh, some other features. Let me get back here to the config. And for example, we can have users forwarded to uh, already linked identity providers. Um, for example, if we take this user five here, it's for example at the local dot local domain, and um, we don't have an identity provider configured that matches this domain yet. So I can just have this user um, forwarded to the already linked IDP. So if we have an identity provider that's already linked to that user by some way he logged in before or has manually got linked here. Um, we can forward the user to this identity provider as well. So if I just go in here and say, um, with the local at local domain for this specific user, I can click sign in and I get redirected. What you also see is that we are using the username of this user that is already used for the first login attempt um, on this specific identity provider. So we're using the username here and not um, the email domain we used in the first step. Um, Besides that, what else can I show? So we also have um, sorry, uh, the opportunity to skip the login page completely. So <clears throat> we can switch this on here. If I say bypass login page here, um, we can just use the login hint. For example, if a client initiates the login like this, and we have a login hint up here, like put, let me put this in the URL manually, like for example, I don't know, test at gmail.com. Um, it's not also only pre-filling this um, username field, but it will also directly redirect to gmail.com if there is a corresponding identity provider configured with that domain. So if I click here, it will just directly go to Google, to the Google login page in this case, and um, can log in there instead of having to enter my uh, username again in the Keycloak page or click a button for login again. Um, yeah, I guess that's basically it. And of course, you can have um, several combinations of all of these flags depending on your scenarios. Um, I've seen a configuration where multiple of the home IDP discovery authenticators have been configured, one using the email and then falling back to a user principal name, for example. And these are our options, but basically you get a little bit of complexity by all of this flex, but um, from my perspective, it's, it kind of works very well. Um, maybe it's a good point to say also thank you to the community because some of these things were suggested by users and um, I was quite happy to implement it. Um, I had to say sorry for a few other things where I said, okay, there's Keyclock standard, maybe you better configure it and I don't have it in the uh, extension. But um, these kinds of things, I just thought this kind of good use cases and uh, was quite happy to implement it. So thanks for the suggestion. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sven Torben. It's quite interesting. And um, yeah, let me ask you a question. Um, is there anything planned for the future for this extension? Any features in the pipeline yeah. or? Um, not that many because I try to keep it kind of not like a huge extension, something I can still maintain. And um, yeah, that doesn't get too big basically because with all of these config options, sometimes things lose focus, I guess. But there's especially one thing I would like to implement, and that is um, when you register new users, like you log in at an IDP for the first time and you come back, um, I would like to have something there for the first broker login flow that basically restricts certain domains so that um, I can even ensure that from, let's say, Google, there's only Gmail supported and not someone comes in with a, I don't know, example.com domain which may not happen with Gmail, but with other identity providers, especially to support multiple domains. And that's kind of a feature I would like to implement just to yeah. get a little bit more restrictive in the way um, users can register. 
yeah, that's the pipeline. Yeah. yeah, that's also quite often um, asked for, yeah. especially in at the at the point of uh, registration, so that only users from a certain domain are able to register yeah. in Keycloak. Yeah, so that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, the the, um, the soul of Keycloak, so that you can yeah. extend Keycloak. Um, perfectly to your to your requirements and to your needs um, by extending the uh, um, service provider interfaces. Yeah. Um, thank you again, Sven Torben. And um, I will put all the links um, to the GitHub repository and also to your company in the, in the show notes to the video description so that all of you out there are able to uh, um, get the resources um, I, I guess there's also an, a comprehensive documentation of this extension in the Keycloak, uh, in the Basically GitHub repository. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, tell us in, in the comments of this video if you um, already used this extension or if you're planning to use it and uh, which experience uh, you made. But um, be aware that, that the comments are not the best place for asking for help. So if you have any um, issues with these extensions, please open an issue at the GitHub repository of uh, Sven Torben. And uh, I guess, uh, Sven Torben, you're happy to uh, to help the people out there. And, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So okay. feel free to open the discussion as well. So Yeah, so the sure. The discussion page on GitHub is open as well. So yeah. Great. Go ahead. OK. Thank you, Sven Tom, and uh, perhaps see you sometimes in the future. So um, you have another quite interesting um, extension in your repository, um, but I want to uh, won't won't lose that much uh, on, on this for now. Um, and perhaps in the future we do another session and talk about this. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, don't forget to give me some thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if not already done so, so that you don't miss any of my other videos in the future. So long, hope to see you soon on this channel. Stay tuned. Bye bye.